Okay, so welcome to our uh, lovely uh, panel presentation. Um, I'm Frankie and me and Sina, uh, you'll see in the screen down there, we're going to take you through just the basics of um, a traditional piece of clothing called Hanfu and through the ages. Um, and yeah, so here we go. It's our first time doing it. I'm very, very happy. Um, yeah. So just a little bit about us. Um, I'm Frankie and I am, uh, I was born in Hong Kong and came to uh, New Zealand, Aotearoa, when I was really young. So uh, growing up here, being the only kind of Asian kid in the class, um, it was a little bit difficult and I kind of lost touch with my roots. Um, and it's not until when I'm a bit older, like now, I want to reconnect to it. And one of the best ways to do it is through um, clothing, fashion, pretty simple because I'm also a cosplay photographer, so it kind of works hand in hand. And um, I'll let Sina introduce herself. Yeah, hi, so my name is Sina and very, very similar to Frankie. I came here at a very young age from Xinjiang in China and um, slightly different from Frankie though. I was fortunate to have a lot of international friends, international students' friends who actually pulled me back and connected me with my culture throughout my childhood. And um, they, they've also, they're also the ones who led me into Han culture, Han Fu, and that's when I did, um, you know, that, that's how I uh, came to be interested and did a lot of my research. And here we are now, so running this class. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is we, we actually, we're just mutual friends of friends. And I think, I don't know, like all of a sudden, like um, I wanted okay. to do more traditional clothing where Sina has a large library, you could probably see like behind her. And um, so I reached out to Sina and I'm like, hey, um, I kind of want to see if I can borrow some of your clothes because I kind of want to do some photo shoot with it. And that's how this whole thing started. Like it's, yeah, it's amazing what fashion can do, cosplay can do. I mean, it connects you to people and yeah, we're, and now we're here talking about it to you guys. <laughs> So I think the most basic thing is what defines a hanfu, um, this picture here, beautiful Sina. Um, <laughs> the term refers to clothing that has a cultural and historical significance to the Han ethnic culture group. Uh, it's a type of clothing um, which is now actually classified as a form of national attire in the same category as what you can see like as a tipao. So you probably have known, if you know more about that and seen it more than maybe uh, this uh, traditional um, Han Fu here, right here. So it, it kind of consists consists of like like three pieces. Like I guess you know rule of thumb, three pieces. So you have the top half, up, the upper garment, the lower garment, and also an overrobe. If you could, if I could say an overrobe. Um, Sina. <laughs> yeah, exactly as you worded it. <laughs> I can add nothing more. <laughs> Okay, so I mentioned upper and lower torsos. Um, just so a lot of people are aware of, this particular piece of clothing um, has over like 3,000 years history. The most basic one is um, probably what you can see is having two, two pieces, three pieces, upper torso, lower torso, and then like over robe. And that was really unisex and both men and women wore this. Um, it's not until a little bit later where there's a second form of hanfu, which is kind of like a, a long robe. Um, this is called a shen yi, and this, um, it's kind of like a bathrobe, if you could imagine. Um, and it kind of like wraps the body and with, with a sash to hold it together. Um, I think one very important thing is um, for you to take away from this whole entire uh, presentation is keep note of how it folds. It's always always left the left collar over the right collar as what um, Tina's demonstrating. Do not ever do it the other way um, because only corpse, like, you know, deceased people, only them wear it the, the other way around. So please remember to put the left collar over the right collar. <laughs> and one thing, though, there's one other, one other instance where, where they have the right over the left is what they call the huren, which is the foreigners. There, there are some foreign tribes up north, particularly of, over China, that do does that do do it the other way around, and 
especially in Tang Dynasty, they do started they do start to recognize that okay, some foreigners do it the other way around, <laughs> and they do respect that. So so yeah. <laughs> Another defining feature of a hanfu is the middle scene. Now, when I was doing my research for this presentation, this really, like, it really stood out to me because I was like, oh, what does this all mean? And um, so depending on the type of hanfu, majority of them have a seam line down the middle of the back. And unlike modern clothing, the hanfu has no seams. And I think, as you can see, where what's how, what Zina is showing us right now, it's one one seam at the back and um, it's all made up with the same piece of cloth. So it's, it's really, it's quite, it's quite interesting. It's a, quite an interesting piece of clothing. Um, so one important note is about this middle seam, what I found out was um, it can't be crooked because it just kind of, it's kind of this whole virtue thing that they had back then where one should stand um, stand up straight and be honest and upright and that's what the seam means so when it's crooked it just shows that um, you're you're not a very very um, trustworthy or honest person so you always keep that nice and straight okay so I think one really prominent thing that a lot of people see when they see a hanfu is the very long sleeves now, there is a reason why these are really long. It's because in Han culture, it's considered rude or informal to not have the sleeves completely draped downwards, especially when you're in front of like important people like um, dignitaries or like uh, people of power. Uh, the sleeves are generally made with at least one hand's length over the fingertips for when the arms are straight. So, Stina, show us the sleeves. Oh, yes. And this, this one is exactly one palm length over and a little bit. So this one is accurate. <laughs> a really good defining feature of these sleeves is that it connects partway down the arm with exception of half sleeves. So this kind of relates back to the other slide where I said there's, um, there's actually no shoulder, a, sh a shoulder seam. So I think in this photo you can see that the seam for the sleeve starts right there. And if you see what the um, scene is demonstration, the sleeve literally is starting the middle of the arm. So now we're gonna go through the different types of um, styles, you could say, through the uh, through um, a, a bit of history that we're gonna go through. So the first one we have is the Han Dynasty. Um, this is, there's two prominent styles in this era, and one of them is really pretty, I love it. Um, so we have the straight rope. This is where it starts to get um, gender diverse. So you have the, the kind of male type and the female type. So for the men, they have the straight rope, which you saw before I showed, and it's literally just a straight rope and a kind of a sash in, in the middle. And the woman's rope is um, what they call a curved rope. And this is the most beautiful piece of clothing you'll probably ever see. Um, the top half looks exactly the same as um, the straight rope with the overlapping collars, but the bottom has a unique, like forms a unique spiral around the torso, forming a beautiful curve. So as you can see with Sina, the way that she's like, it's wrapped around the body, like a spiral. Did you want to show them the, the, how hard it is to put it on? <laughs> I'll show you how to take this off and you can probably see how hard it was to put on. Okay, so this it's is a very a unique piece of cutting, if, if I can say. Like, it's, it's, I can't describe it. You'll have to see it with your own eyes. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like, I, yeah, so you wrap this around you, literally. And this one also, there's a little sash here. And then this kind of just goes, woo! So it's, when you take it off, it's like, uh, it's not symmetrical. It's just two weird, weird very weirdly, very oddly shaped fabric <laughs> together. Holds this thing together. <laughs> hey, Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, so after the Han Dynasty, 
we have what we call the North and South Dynasty. So um, during this period, it, there was a lot of wars. It's really super chaotic. And um, there was a lot of rebellions through this time too. So I, I think during this time, people start thinking big and bold. Um, a lot of their clothing started becoming, like they, they resemble more towards like um, the myths and legends that we had um, in, our, in our culture about, you know, immortals, uh, fairies and things like that. And they started using a lot of different colors and, and it just, it kind of went quite, I, I mean, like um, costumey, if I could say, like, you know, looking more towards like an immortal, um, very flowy. Um, and as you can see here, this is a great example. I found this little bit um, on this website called New Hanfu, and it had this um, kind of ancient drawing of what the fashion looked like back then. And as you can see, it's quite, it's quite like like what you see in movies and TV series during this time. Um, so we have seen her, she's putting on the Han Fu at that time, and you can probably tell it is a lot different from the Han Dynasty where they had just like a single piece of um, material. It's more of the upper torso, lower torso, and also patterns and just bright colors. And very long sleeves. That's this is where they have really big sleeves. And it's like, I look at it and I'm like, how do you guys work? They don't. <laughs> <laughs> the people who wear these long sleeves don't work <laughs> and when they work they change into something shorter <laughs> um i might want to ask you a question cena what's a like to you what's a defining feature about this hand though? like what you know difference between the one that you wore before and this one um to me it's probably uh, the sleeves are definitely something that's it's very like boom different because these sleeves um in this dynasty this is probably the only time when these sleeves are actually popular but uh, there were um, there are some similar sleeves in tang dynasty but i feel like that the, the shapes are slightly different and this mm. particular a very long very like curved small sleeve is only ever seen here and the people mm. kind of just didn't like they were rebellious i mean they kind of just any of that and move on like they just ditched it so this is a ditched fashion <laughs> beautiful stunning freaking so eh? like i love this like what is this it's so artistic who needs to do housework right <laughs> <laughs> i'm just keeping note that even though this is a different um a different dynasty there is still the whole sleeve and the um how long the sleeve is supposed to be so that's one thing that i kept as well it's just the, the whole being formal and formal kind of thing so yes thank you move your head like this and the sleeve has to drape straight if they can drape straight it is a worthy thing if yeah. it's curved like this it's not <laughs> So this is my favorite. I'm not gonna lie. I think a lot of people find this their favorite too. So um, uh, this is the Tang Dynasty. So this is one of the longest, I think, eras in the history of China. And this is the most, I guess, prosperous because this is what it relates to the whole, um, the development of the Silk Road to start trading a lot with other um, countries and um, it influenced the fashion back then a lot. And why I really like this era, because they celebrated the plump and busty women um, as a measure of beauty. So, I mean, hello, plump and busty, just saying. Um, so I love this so much. So the most iconic Han for the time is the chest high skirts, um, where you may have seen in movies or whatnot, and we'll get into that later, but the literal skirt is up here kind of like a boob tube and um, it, it's quite busty. So um, we'll, we'll watch we'll watch Cena get ready. So think, if you can see, it's like the, the skirt is up by the chest and it's very flattering, super flattering on anyone. And I might add, because during this era, a lot of trading was happening, but also um, 
they did their own trading. So they trade a lot of silk. So the silk production was at the time quite, um, as you can say, modern and their fabric dyeing techniques. Um, what was, was also quite important to know is they started printing, um, like doing garment printing. So like printing uh, different kind of um, shapes and, and patterns onto these, these, the, these silk pieces where um, I guess only the extremely wealthy or like popular ladies of like high statuses will wear them as you can see see right here um and like this is so pretty Cena. see what i mean it's super flattering um i might want to add i think um correct me if i'm wrong Cena. during this dynasty it's the first is this the first um female emperor the only female emperor the only female emperor so <laughs> Just say, very, very cool. So um, if you want to uh, learn more about her, she's, she's an amazing person. Um, well, you know, off with their heads kind of thing. But um, yeah, just have a Google. Her name's um, Wu Zetian. So yeah, amazing. What's a standout feature for you for this one, Sina? Um, I'd say the silk. You might need to come closer, I can't hear you. You'd say the silk probably in the silk the printing. Silk. So like, I can show you, say for example, all of this material is uh, this is this one's not silk, but um, a lot of Tang Dynasty has even nowadays they're designed to mimic how flowy the silk was back then. Mm -hmm. So and then a key feature are these little patterns. So it's the, the silk printing, the silk dyeing. So they make a lot of these patterns. In Tang Dynasty, these are very, very, very popular. The mm. lining, the printing, yeah, these silk printings are um, everywhere, and they make the clothing look so fashionable. And yeah, and then because, and then added with the silk texture, it makes it makes the whole thing just very flattering, especially for busty women. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Hey, eh? um, this the, the the clothing in this dynasty is, especially towards the end, is very dedicated designed for busty women like this kind of costume like if you were too skinny this is probably not, not the best one for you it would fall <laughs> amazing <laughs> so after the um tang dynasty it was um it followed by the song dynasty now back then and obviously when i just showed you what cena showed you um, Tang Dynasty is extravagant. There was colors, there was patterns. It was just, you know, it was just like simply just beautiful back then. When they changed to the Song Dynasty, um, it kind of drastically changed a bit just because that there was a heavy emphasis on the practice of Neo-Confucianism ideologies. So therefore the clothes reflected that by becoming more simple, more elegant, conservative, and introverted, if I could use that word to describe. Um, there was an iconic piece of clothing that appeared in this era, though, um, which is called the Beizi. And it's similar to what I can describe as a light robe. So I have a picture here to show you. So it's um, like, a, like a light robe that goes over the hanfu. And why they quite like this in that period? Because it visually creates um, a more elongated and slender look for the females. Another thing I might mention in this dynasty was that the pants became quite popular in this era. So, yeah. Oh, that's pretty. See, ta-da. So that's the, yeah. So I think one thing about the, um, the this light robe that Cena's got on, it actually, it doesn't go all the way down. So if you, it's, it just kind of goes like kind of three quarter way. So it's not like a full on robe robe. It's just like a thing that put over. Um, like, like modesty reasons, is it? It can go all the way down here. Yes, it goes all the way down. Oh, that's pretty. There's a long one and there's a short one and there's an even shorter one, which I don't have today. Oh, I this is thank you. Soul. I think this one's more so than the other one. <laughs> So the last one we're going to talk about is um, the Ming Dynasty. Now this this is this is this is beautiful as well. I am a fan, 
and I'm sure that um, um, a lot of you might have read uh, like uh, just recently about um, a, a Dior um, kind of controversy. <laughs> so the stand-up piece in this era, I'll have to say, is um, the, uh, translated to horse face skirt. Now, the reason why it's called horse face skirt is because it resembles a fortress um, called horse face fortress back in the time. So it's got the stairs on the side, which the pleats mimic, and then the front door and the back door, which is the, the panels that you see. So if you can see Sina right now, it's actually like a wraparound and it's not, and it's just tied up. It's not like, um, there's, there's no seams, nothing like that. So it's literally, you have a, like two panels, uh, one in the front, one in the back, and then just pleats on the side. So it's a really, really cool piece. Um, I, I would probably wear this if I had one, like just in, like like daily uh, doing my like going to work and stuff like that, because I think it's just it's timeless. Um, this and the, another thing about this unique uh, skirt is that it provided women with more mobility than the previous hanfus that you saw. So you know when they're riding a horse or like you know uh, they can be more active in this piece rather than being quite restricted in, in, in the other hanfus. Another thing about this era was that embroidery and weaving and, and the practice of weaving gold through fabrics was very very popular um as you can oh that's stunning very very nice okay we'll just wait for Sina to get changed but so it's it's a completely different look to the other ones and you can see that there's a collar going on as well so so in Ming Dynasty, they also had this metallic collar, the metallic buttons, instead of the old sashes. Mm. They, had both, they still used both, but in this dynasty, they did introduce the metallic buttons. For example, this one is very, very, very nice. It's the top, and then it goes on, and voila. What's your favorite, what's your favorite, um, I guess, favorite piece out of this, this era, Sina? What's your favorite, like, bit of this hanfu? It's probably the horse face skirt. <laughs> yeah. Because no one, no one can, no one can not like this, okay? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Dior liked it enough, right? <laughs> I'm not talking about it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. So, it, yeah, this is, this is my favorite piece of, of that skirt, I have to say. Um, so now we've talked about the past and we'll talk about, um, you know, the future, well, future, current, current, what's currently going on, the modernization of, of this particular um, traditional piece of clothing. So the Hanfu type of dress declined in popularity when it was under the Manchu rule. Um, but now in the 21st century, there's been a movement to reclaim this piece of um, particular clothing. Uh, there's something called the Hanfu Revival Movement, and this was created because a lot of people had a desire to express the national identity, and it's more also a form of self-expression. I think for me, when I put on it, it's more of a self-expression kind of thing, trying to get back to, you know, my roots and stuff like that. So um, what is it to you, Sina? How do you feel when you put on Hanfu? Um... I feel like it's a need because like um, growing up in New Zealand, I, I probably wouldn't feel this way anywhere else, but growing up in New Zealand where it's so diverse, every culture has their own thing. I felt that like Han culture needed its own thing too. Like, like why, why does everyone, everyone's culture have their own culture clothes and why doesn't my culture have one? And then, you know, and then you go into research and you realize, oh, I do. Yeah, I think that relates back to um, for this new revival, people are actually taking pieces of this of, of all the ones that you've seen to wear it like normally, like as an everyday fashion. Like um, I think, you know, for me, if I had like a, one of those horse face skirts, I'll probably wear it with like a nice blouse and just wear it to work. So a lot of people are doing that. And I think if you go on, um, you know, places like, Taobao and stuff like that, there are like modern um, hangus that you can buy and it's like a, it's mixed in with like modern fashion. Um, so the, uh, yes, 
putting that aside, I mean, there's also, we know, as you've seen, you know, we've had like um, Dior come out with like their version of um, a horse based skirt kind of thing. So I guess that's part of the modernization where people are like, okay, well, these are quite cool. You know, we can see people wear it, you know, why not wear it, right? Um, there's, there's no rule saying that you can't. So, yeah. Another thing that when me and Senior were talking about um, putting together this presentation was, I really wanted to get the point across the represent, rep representation in media. Because of, you know, uh, which we, I'm, I'm so amazed, honestly, like you turn on like Netflix these days and there's like a Chinese TV series. Like, it's amazing how like, it's so diverse and so like, it's, 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 it's really cool. So because the internet and social media, it's not, not only the driving forces um, for the surge in popularity, you know, um, with Netflix, Vicky.com, like YouTube, you know, with all these different like dramas and movies being more accessible on the internet to everyone else in the world, um, there has been a misconception that it represents traditional clothing. And um, what's important to know is what you see on TV and movies, these are called costumes and they resemble traditional clothing, but it's not considered as a hanbu. Um, what I can say is that these costumes themselves do have their own term and it's called Buzong. It literally translates to ancient costume. So it's very easy if you want to buy some one of these, you just put that term into the search bar and out pops all these different like types that you can wear. Um, what I can also say is that there are some TV series out there who have made an attempt to make it more um, authentic, more historical. So if you are interested and watching some of that, um, I have two that I can probably recommend, okay. which is called Serenade of Peaceful Joy and The Longest Day in Chang'an. So one is like Song Dynasty centric, the other one's Tang Dynasty centric. Um, once again, there are, it's not completely accurate, but they have made an attempt to make it as accurate as possible. Got anything to add? Um, yes, I did. You know, I'm trying to collect my thoughts, what I need to add. Oh, yes. Um, I mean, also within, especially within the costumers community, costumers, cosplayers, there's, um, there's another genre of, I guess, cosplay that surged up. It's called a Hanfu interpretation, which means, for example, which is really cool because what they do is, for example, they take a character from a boudoir and they make a Hanfu version and they wear it. Oh, that's is, amazing. Which is really, that's really, really, really cool. And I've seen this happen with a lot of things, with um, TV shows, with um, anime. There's anything that can get the costumers on, that like the costumers can think of, they will do it. Um, and the Hanfu enthusiasts would put a Hanfu on any character that they like, which is really cool. And I love seeing a lot of the, um, the Hanfu ideas that they come up with. And even like, and they even have reasons for a Song Dynasty Hanfu because yeah, and they come up with all these reasons and it's like, woo! They, they can be doable, but yeah. yeah. So we're just gonna wanna get that across. Um, uh, it's not exactly a traditional piece of clothing. Um, it's more of a costume based one. one. So, but you know, don't let that stop you. Go, go and wear one. <laughs> <laughs> I think the last, the last, I guess, thing that we wanna talk about is, we get this a lot is, can I wear this? I'm not Chinese. Can I wear this? And I think both me and Sina is like, of course, why wait, right? We want you to wear it. You would look stunning in it. Please wear it. Um, but obviously, ultimately, it's up to, uh, you know, the for uh, you, foreigners, um, if you want to wear it. If you feel a strong connection to it, if you want to learn more about history and the significance, go ahead and wear one. Um, I found this amazing um, picture. So this was like a little, um, a short YouTube clip uh, on Hanfu, newhanfu.com. Um, please search it up. It's about um, three foreigners and they all got dressed up in uh, different dynasty um, Hanfus and they went to experience the, um, the different, like back then, you know, like tea making, um, making little um, uh, like, silk flowers, embroidery, and they talk about like like an experience. And these three ladies look amazing, stunning. I cannot, like, it, they wore it, like, it was the way that, that 
they were portrayed, they, how they were washed up was accurate to like the tea. It was amazing and they loved it. So I think that, you know, don't let it hold you back. Um, go and wear it. Wear it properly, wear it respectfully. If in doubt and you're not quite sure or you're not yet committed to wear the actual traditional hanku, you can always wear a um, wudong instead, um, where that's the costume based um, from what you see on TVs and movies and stuff. So, and what I can say here is, um, oh, well, I'm gonna, well, we can see that there's another photo. I mean, he, foreigners look stunning in Hanku, I'm not kidding you. Like, look stunning. So please go ahead and wear it. Um, so Sina's got a little quote that she wants to talk about. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, I guess on behalf of the Chinese Hanku community, they have this saying going on that's like literally tagged in every like event, every Hanfu store, it says, wear our garments, wear our Hanfu, wear our garments of Han and foster our state of citizens. So um, it's, it's really a saying that tells you that, in, it, to me, it says anyone can wear Hanfu because Han culture is a very welcoming culture. It's not a culture that says, not nope, only we can wear this, but the culture that says, yes, everyone can. And, um, and the, the only thing to be aware of is that while you wear hanfu, they expect you to, while you wear hanfu, you, you are representing hand culture. So they expect you to wear that with respect. And I mean, everyone will wear, wear them with, with respect. <laughs> so yeah, so at the end of the day, really um, wear them, have fun. It's great, it's a great experience. Yeah. Yes, and get photos taken, get photos taken, because, you know, you would like to keep the memories. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the end of our presentation. We hope that, you know, it was helpful, some, you know, somehow it's helpful to you, and hopefully you've come across and took away something that, you know, you would you would keep. And um, please follow us on social media. Um, I'm Frankie, I'm the Minutes Photography, and Sina is Thousand Falls, New Zealand. So please give us a follow. We're it's like a little country in the bottom of the world. <laughs> but um yeah, please, um yeah, thanks.